Hi everyone, my name is Riley and I'm hitting you here on the Jams and Tea channel with a very special video, counting down five ambient albums that I think are absolutely essential listening for all strands of ambient fans, whether you want something calm and relaxing while you try to work, or whether you want something stimulating and glitchy and noisy to kind of keep your brain active. There's all kinds of wonderful music in the world of ambient that deserves a shout out. Now, some of these records you may have heard of, some of the artists are pretty famous, but when it's in the case of a famous artist, I've tried to pick a record that is a little more obscure, a record that I think really deserves a shout. Uh, so hopefully, if you are looking for new ambient records to listen to if you're looking to get into ambient music you can come away from this video with a few wrecks that might potentially end up being favorites of yours within the genre before we start i feel like we should outline what kind of working definition we're using here for ambient music because to me it feels like a lot of music where there's very muted or maybe no percussion whatsoever and just kind of synthesized tones that kind of ebb and flow just about anything under this kind of broad description seems to fit the bill of ambient music and to a certain extent I think the tag ambient can be somewhat carelessly applied to just about any kind of music that fits that broad general bill. For the sake of simplicity I'm going to avoid the world of drone music in this video which I think is very much a part of the ambient world but kind of its own thing but I am going to be dipping my toes into the realms of ambient noise, ambient glitch, more kind of uh, maybe busier music than you might associate with your traditional kind of soothing ambient. My aim here is to give a broad picture of just about everything that ambient can be, more or less, and in the process recommend some albums that I think absolutely deserve more love and more attention. If you're an absolute ambient nut, you'll probably have heard of most of these, though there's one in this list that I guarantee most people in the world definitely haven't heard. So wherever you're coming from, whatever your previous experience in ambient music, whether you're a seasoned expert or whether you're just looking to get some more recommendations, strap in and I'm going to get into five ambient records you absolutely need to hear. First up on the list, Brian Eno and Harold Budd with Daniel Lenoy, The Pearl. Brian Eno, of course, regarded by many as the kind of grandfather of ambient music, certainly as the person who kind of invented or conceptualized the term specifically, and probably a name that is so ubiquitous with ambient music that it almost feels silly to be including him on this list. But step aside from Eno for a second and focus on his collaborators here. First of all, you have the incredible Daniel Lenoy, who worked under Eno, helping to produce a number of fantastic records for U2 and other artists in the 80s and 90s. But most of all, this selection is to highlight a man who is, in my view, one of the greatest artists in the history of ambient or gentle, kind of soothing music, the incredible Harold Budd, who tragically passed away from COVID-related complications in 2020. Budd has a left a legacy of music behind that is some of the most persistent and beautiful and, and striking in all of ambient music, and yet also some of the most undervalued by general music audiences. However, nowhere for me has Bud connected more emotionally and made more of his best music than in this collaboration with Eno and Lenoy The Pearl, released in 1984. This is quite simply one of the most beautiful albums I have ever heard. The emotional tone of a lot of the records I'm going to be talking about today is kind of difficult to pin down, and I think that's something that is true of the best ambient music. You shouldn't be clearly evoking one unambiguous emotion in the best ambient music, I think. The best ambient music should evoke a headspace that is entirely unique, something that you can't get from anything else, or from simply meditating or exposing yourself to things like 
like rain sounds or general ASMR. The best ambient music should offer something that you cannot get quite like that anywhere else. And I think the Pearl and every other album I'm going to talk about today absolutely does that. From the intoning beauty of a stream with bright fish to the stark, haunting stillness of against the sky to the lush and ethereal lost in the humming air which feels like a prototype for the entire career of stars of the lid this album is absolutely packed with gorgeous soundscapes and utterly beguiling piano melodies in fact that warm electric piano that you hear twinkling across this entire record is essentially the sonic signifier that makes it what it is interacting beautifully with the soundscapes produced lovingly by Eno Bud and Lenoy. the record is delicate and touches upon darkness in certain places but never fully subjects you to a sullen mindset it always just keeps you cradled and conscious of the world around you in ways that are so difficult to put into words that only the best ambient music can evoke by the time an echo of night is reprising against the sky it's almost difficult for me not to well up with emotion and just spine tingling sensory bliss the tone of this record is unreal and it's reducing me to an absolute mess of words just trying to convey it. The Pearl is absolutely essential listening. Whether you're looking to get into ambient or not, it's just a great record. The second album on my list is Hiroshi Yoshimura's Music for Nine Postcards. Now, on most days, if you were to ask me to pick my favourite ambient record of all time, I would probably not be able to give you an answer. But for a while now, it's felt like Hiroshi Yoshimura's masterpiece, Music for Nine Postcards, just might be that record. Commissioned and conceptualized as an ambient soundtrack for the Hara Museum of Contemporary Art, Yoshimura created these pieces to evoke that sense of minimal interior design. When you listen to the record, you feel as though you are in empty white rooms bathed in vacant light. It's a remarkably still and calming record, and yet when the opening notes of water copy come in with a kind of dissonant and eerie drone, there's an unsettling lack of conclusive feeling to it that makes this record feel utterly mysterious in ways that only invite you to listen again and again. The simple but lonely melody of Blink is one of the most beautiful little things I've ever heard, feeling like a, a, a lonely creature on a desolate planet, yet it soon becomes accompanied with gorgeous waves of synths and sounds that make it feel like it is communicating with some other force around it. It's a, it's a really evocative and powerful piece, and the fourth track on the record, which is maybe Yoshimura's finest moment, Dance PM, feels like it reaches the heights of his powers with this gently arpeggiating motif that is interacting with these hazy synthesizers that are bleeding in and out of existence. It's a gorgeous moment that absolutely renders me speechless. Other tracks on the record like View From My Window and Urban Snow evoke these clear and desolate and beautiful landscapes of pure white. And even the intrusion of Yoshimura's own voice on Urban Snow doesn't do anything to dispel the stilling and, and wonderful mood of this record. By the time it essentially evaporates out of existence with the closing track Dream, you truly do feel like you're waking up from some unknowable, intangible, beautiful experience that's evaporating from your memory like any dream. It's a record that will stay with me forever, and it's a record that I find myself drawn to in just about any mood and just about any setting. Really the highest of compliments that you could pay any ambient release. The first two records on this list are more in the sort of warm and comforting mode of ambient music, though still with uh, many shades of, of eeriness and coldness too. However, the third album on this list is a much more desolate and empty and at times quite dark and even disturbing record from two amazing musicians who I am very lucky to know personally, August Nelson and Mason Knapps. 
Glacier Flower 21. The third project from the Glacier Flower duo, Glacier Flower 21, sees the two taking their ambient exploratory sound into a much denser, deeper pool of, of empty, desolate drones. It is an incredibly affecting record from the minimal and repetitive nine minute opening of Beyond the Postcard Beaches to the much more emotive and kind of forlorn tones of Tristidia ex Nihilo and Like I'm Not Even There. The record itself even has a beautiful and emotional arc with this stunning centerpiece until we meet again, surprising you along the way with some more interesting and unique diversions into the idiosyncrasies of Glacier Flower sound. This is by far the most obscure record on this list and it's likely that unless I know you personally you probably haven't heard this album so I'm going to include a link to it below on Bandcamp for you to check out, stream it and listen. It's also on Spotify and Apple as well. I want to emphasize that I am shouting this record out because I genuinely love it. Not just because I happen to know the people involved but because I genuinely believe it to be one of the most masterpieces of dark ambient in recent years, and I'm quite confident that if you check it out too, you'll agree with me. From the disquieting and frequently dour drones of Glacier Flower, we move into the final selections for this list of five. Records that more actively incorporate elements of noise and harsher textures, but still situate them within an ambient bed. And here is where I think I would like to try and push at the boundaries of what some people might think of conventionally as ambient records. Because I do believe that these last two records on my list can be listened to passively as an environmental soundtrack to other activities. But I do also want to forecast that by saying that there are textures in these records that listeners who are looking for a purely comforting or simplistic experience might find quite disarming and even off-putting. First up on my list is a record from an electronic artist who is generally regarded as one of the most prestigious and brilliant and original minds in ambient electronic music of the last 20 years, Tim Hecker. But I'm not going to recommend one of Hecker's most beloved records like the Sensational Harmony and Ultraviolet or the disquieting Rave Death 1972, or even the underrated and brilliant recent record, Kanoyo. I'm going to recommend my favourite Hecker record, which I think is also perhaps his single most underrated album, 2004's Mirages. Mirages is Hecker's third record, and stuck as it is between the twin masterpieces of Radio Amour and Harmony and Ultraviolet, it often gets overlooked for its comparatively modest scope and general overall darker palette. It seems to be a kind of ugly sort of sibling record that few people I think truly give the light of day that it deserves. Mirages is a record that so vividly evokes an urban landscape in the dead of night, not just in its very stark album art, but in the textures and sounds of static that float through these gentle pieces, corrupting them and, and kind of making them feel like you have electricity pulsing through these otherwise simplistic and, and straightforward drones. Hecker animates his music with so much textural distortion and strange washes of sound that it's a record that frequently can be overwhelming if you play it too loud or if you let yourself sort of fall into it, but also I think can bring your mind to a sense of utter calm and, and peacefulness if you let it, if you really surrender to it. Nowhere I think is this truer than the incredible duo that finished this record, the 8 minute Balkanize You and the 10 minute Incurably Optimistic, the latter of which I think is the greatest composition Hecker has ever released and maybe my favourite piece of ambient music of all time. Incurably Optimistic just imbues you with a sense of glimmering hope as you ascend through the night sky over a city of neon. This entire record makes you feel the light pollution in the air when you're listening to it. It's a sensory experience that if you're a, even slightly synesthetic you'll find potentially incredibly overwhelming and even euphoric. 
it is a record that evokes strong sensations and and deeply rooted sensory experiences that I can barely even comprehend and probably sound like an absolute fool trying to communicate. I really can't impress enough what an important and utterly moving record this is from Hecker, especially considering how overlooked it is overall. It may not be your exact slice of what you want from this artist, but in general I think it deserves more love and is maybe better than most people think. The final album on my list has a similar sort of harsher tone to Hecker's Mirages, but I think takes it even a little bit further, exploring the far reaches of what could possibly be called ambient music, incorporating even beats to a certain extent, some of which listeners who are looking for a more casual and inviting experience might find downright alienating, and that is Ben Frost's Theory of Machines. This album, released in 2006, was basically Frost's breakout release, and I think has gone on to sort of live in the shadow of records that are more generally heard and acclaimed, like By the Throat and Aurora. Great albums, to be sure, but neither of them quite hit the highs of Theory of Machines, and Theory of Machines in general I think is the closest his work actually gets to ambient music in the first place, to a kind of passive droning experience that nevertheless incorporates textures that are intellectually stimulating and that kind of leave your body full of goosebumps and your mind feeling refreshed and stimulated. Nowhere is this more in your face than the title track that opens this record, the 10 minute Theory of Machines, which has a gorgeous sort of bathing sound palette that is eventually interrupted by a kind of thudding percussive rhythm. Similarly, the second track, Stomp, has a similar sort of gentle but pulsing beat and a sample of a Swans track, of all things, which kind of leads nicely into the third track, which is humorously titled We Love You, Michael Jira, and is still eerie and full of menace in a way that I think will genuinely unsettle but also thoroughly wake up and animate just about anyone who's listening to this record. Following the brief but pulsing coda, the album ends in an unexpected fashion with the truly beautiful and disarming Forgetting You is Like Breathing Water. It's a gorgeous and surprisingly simple and plaintive piece that those who are listening to this record will not be expecting because this album up until this point has been so kind of dissonant and eerie but it ends in a genuinely gorgeous place and like with incurably optimistic on mirages i find forgetting you is like breathing water to be one of the most evocative and emotionally powerful ambient tracks i've ever heard and this is the thing about ambient music is in its very nature it's difficult to describe without reducing yourself to an utter mess of words and i've tried my best to off the cuff sell these records to you and i hope you will check them out but more than anything i want to hear from you about what it is that you value in ambient music? What ambient music even means to you? What kind of records you put on when you're just looking for a soundscape to fill your mind and help stimulate you while you do other things? Whether you're more prone to the gentler side of things, the Hiroshi Yoshimura's, the Eno and Bud and Lenoise, or whether the darker side of things, the Glacier Flowers, the Ben Frost and the Tim Heckers are what really stimulates you. I want to have a conversation in the comments about what ambient music is to you and what you value in it the most. And more than anything, I want you to check out these records and let me know in the comments what you think of them, whether they connect with you or not. What would be on your list of ambient records that are absolutely essential listening? I'll put it as a disclaimer as well, this is not my five favourite ambient records. There are other ambient records I love even more than some of these that I chose not to shout out because they just didn't quite fit with the theme of the video or because they're already beloved enough. But if you want to hear it from more recommendations from me, feel free to ask, but I want to get recs from you as well, so hit me up in the comment section below and we can start a listening club. However, that's all I have for this video. Stick around for Thursday's video, which is going to be a full discography breakdown of the Menzingers with Morgan and Connor, and then we'll be back on Sunday reviewing new releases as always. And I know that normally on Tuesday we typically have a record club video. We weren't able to shoot one this week, but we will have another one for you this time next week. So make sure you stick around for that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos and podcasts about music. If you 
you want to give us a request, if you want to recommend something for us to listen to or talk about, you can hit us up in the comments below. But if you want to really make sure that your request gets heard, think about hitting that join button on our channel page. And for just $1 a month, contributing to help this channel continue to run and getting entitled to perks such as being able to recommend us music to listen to, priority comment response, and getting your name featured in the title crawl of every video on this channel. Until next time though folks, rock over London, rock on Chicago, Verizon, can you hear me now?